manager Ray Knight telling his troops to look for the fastball. Tommy Green on the hill for the Strohs, facing Deion Sanders, who can't catch the heat. Green blows him away at four strikeouts in four and two third. Bottom of the third, this one nothing Astros. Pokey Reese smacks it to left. Turning, Luis Gonzalez over the shoulder, saves a run. Boone has to, has to go back to second. A batter later, it is Dion again. Three for his last 26 with runners in scoring position. The slide continues. Dion over three on the night. Top of the fourth, two nothing Astros. Two on for Willie Green, who unloads. Upper deck. The ninth two time it's ever been done in Astrodome history, but the second time this week. 3-2 Reds. They go on to win it 4-2. Reds have now won five in a row for the Army Paratroopers, too, although this one kind of bites it. That's a tough way to start the fourth. Top of the first, Pirate All-Star Tony Womack on first, playing like cool Papa Bell. Gets a good jump off Andy Bennis. Steals second, his 32nd straight steal. That's a Pirate record, the most since Vince Coleman's 44 straight in 1989. He would later score. Bucks led it one nothing. Bottom of the first, two on for All-Star Ray Langford. He tags Francisco Cordova for his 17th homer of the year. Langford two for four with four RBIs, raising his average to 332, three to one cards. Gene Lamont not pleased. Andy Bennis had it work. Second inning, Dale Swain on the heat. Mark Smith, take a seat. Jason Kendall, meet. Bennis would strike out six in a row at 1.10 in seven innings. Top of the six, still three to one cards. Womack on first again. He's trying to extend the streak, but Mike DeFelice on the pitch out puts the end to it. Close play at second, but still out. Bottom of the seventh, tied at three men at the corners for Langford. The check swing number to Luke Collier at short. Goes home, beats Delano to Shields with a throw. Another close play. 4-3 Cardinals. 5-4 cards with two out on the top of the ninth. Jose Guillen leading off first. The Ron Gant loses the fly in left field. Guillen would come around to score on Womack's fly ball to tie the game at five and send it to extra innings. To the top of the tenth, Mark Smith at the plate with a man on second. This is the first pitch he's ever seen from Dennis Eckersley. Wow! He mashes it. Halfway to Mascuda off Eckersley. His second homer of the year. Eck in shock. Bucks take this one seven to five. It is their fifth straight win. X said afterward, first pitch he sees, he goes deep. I mean, what's that? And goodbye, as did Rogers in this game. Top of the first to the game. Juan Guzman starting for Toronto, facing Wade Boggs with Derek Jeter on second. Boggs swinging, then Bernie Williams. Likewise, Guzman would get out of the inning by making Tino Martinez fly out. David Cohn started for the Yankees in the bottom of the second. Ed Sprague with a runner on first. Pat Kelly with a fantastic unassisted double play. Runs were hard to come by in this game. Still no score. Guzman on a pitch count. Only pitched five innings, striking out eight, giving up one hit. Bottom of the sixth with Orlando Merced at the plate. David Cohn and Joe Girardi can't get together with the pitch. And normally that's trouble. And Orlando Merced steps back in and steps into it. His eighth home run of the season. One nothing Toronto. Cohn bombing. And after the inning, Cohn is describing the miscommunication. So, yes, he's communicating the miscommunication. Kelvin Escobar shut down the Yankees after Guzman left in the top of the ninth. Yanks down one nothing. Jeter looking, and then Boggs looking to end the game. Escobar is 2-0 and in two appearances this year coming in for Guzman. Guzman and Escobar combined it to toss a two-hitter on the Yankees on the 14-year anniversary of Dick's Day rain out makeup. Top of the first of game one, no score man on second. Travis Ryman takes Sean Bosky deep to right, but Jeffrey Hammonds robs him. Let's take another look. It prevents a run, perhaps two. Maybe it might have been a home run. Bottom of the third, tied at two, Bob Hamlin. No one's going to get this one. Number eight for Hamlin. Tigers take a 3-2 lead. Top of the fifth, tied at three. Lenny Webster at the plate. Base hit, pokes it to right field. Cal Ripken come on down. Orioles go up 4-3. And that's how this game would end. Game one, Arthur Rhodes combined with uh, three other Baltimore relievers. Header gets hit in the calf by Omar Oliveras. And if this looks familiar, well, in game one, he gets hit in the exact same spot. Anderson left game two in the third inning. But back to game two, Anderson inning one. Second batter of the game, Roberto Alomar. Hits one down the left field line. Curtis Pride, whoops, misplays the ball. Anderson, Gimpy and all, comes around to score. one nothing Orioles. Still in the first inning, different play, another misplay. Two misplays, two runs of score. Orioles up 3 nothing In the second inning, this is a theme. Yes. Bases loaded. Brian Hunter brings every single person home, including himself. Grand salami time ties the game at five. 
Bottom of the third, Tigers trail eight to five. Bob Hamelin hits a two-run home run. His second home run of the doubleheader. I feel this is like Sesame Street. This highlight brought to you by the number two. Tigers trail eight to seven. In the bottom of the fourth, Jeff, Jeff Rebele mishandles not one, but two. That led to the bases loaded. Alan Mills walks Bob Hamelin, and then Damien Easley busts out the walking stick. Tigers lead 11 to 8 at this point. In the seventh inning, in that would be two walks in a row. He'd walk more than just that, too. Seventh inning, second Tigers relief pitcher Doug Brokale not only makes a play on Pete Incavilia, but then makes the play on Roberto Alomar. <laughs> Tigers win the second game. On the second assist of the inning for Doug Brokale, 11 to 8. We're going to stop this steam, this steam madness. Hunter's grand slam and Alan Mills's wide grass and domes. And you thought it was only celebrated in America. Yeah, Fred McGriff rounding first on an RBI double comes up with a strained hamstring. He would leave the game because you can't play when you're hopping on one leg. He's day to day. Meanwhile, for the Expos, Henry Rodriguez suffered a lower back strain. He would not stay around either. There was some defense in this game. Top of the eighth, tied at three with two on Ryan McGuire. In for Rodriguez and left. Robs Eddie Perez at the wall. Saves at least a run for Carlos Perez. Top of the ninth, same score. Runners at first and second. Mark Lemke hitting 225. Goes the other way, down the line, and it eludes Joe Orsilak. Andrew Jones scores. Ryan Klesko scores on Lemke's triple. 5-3 Braves. Lemke would then score to make it 6-3. Expo fans getting a little angry, so umpire Mark Hirschbeck sends one of them to the showers. Braves win it 6-3. Braves have now won six in a row against Montreal. Expos the other two. Todd Hundley sitting out, so the Mets bring in Todd Pratt as his replacement. In his first major league at bat since July of 95, Pratt hits his first homer since July of 94 with the Phillies. Pratt wasn't done yet. Bottom of the third. He hits a ball right at Al Leiter. Leiter can't field it. Butch Husky scores on Pratt's infield single. Three RBI in the game. Mets lead this one 3-2. Same score, top of the fifth. Edgar Renteria on first for Jim Eisenreich. Eisenreich's looper. Bernard Gilkey makes the catch. And watch this bullet to first base for the double play. His 13th assist of the season. Bottom of the fifth. Gilkey comes to the plate with one on. Still pumped up from the great defensive play. He drives this one over the wall. His eighth of the year, the two-run shot gives the Mets a 5-2 lead. They go on to win 6-2. Top of the fourth, Mariners 2-0 lead. Jose Cruz Jr. supplies the bomb here, hammering Dennis Springer to right for a two-run homer. His ninth of the season, 4-0 Mariners. Bottom of the fourth, 4-1 Seattle. Randy Johnson without the overpowering stuff, and Darren Erstad with the bottle rocket to right. Only the seventh lefty to ever homer off Johnson. Pulls the Angels to within 4-2. Bottom of the fifth. Junior at first for Edgar Martinez. Dennis Springer still in. You wonder why when Edgar pulls this one to left, his 16th of the year, 6-2 Seattle. Then bottom of the seventh, one out. Johnson in trouble. Base is loaded, but he gets Dave Hollins to ground it to A-Rod at short. The inning ending 6-4-3. Johnson not his best stuff, but he got the batters out with ground balls. He struck out just four in seven innings, allowing AL West. They're hosting the A's, the masses at the ballpark in Arlington, their largest regular season crowd ever. Bottom of the third, up 3-2 are the Rangers. Rusty Greer at third, Will Clark at first. Lee Stevens with the home run. A three-run shot, his 10th of the year. He also had a double and a triple in this one. The Rangers go up 6-2. Bottom of the fifth, Rangers up 7-4. Dane Johnson pitching to Domingo Cedeno, but Jim Evans calls time because the fireworks that are supposed to be after the game start going off in the fifth. Top of the ninth, John Wetland facing Jason McDonald, trying to save it, and he saves it with a nice play. Wetland picks up his 18th save. Rangers win it 7-6. Wetland had blown three of his previous five saves. First, Quinton McCracken, second batter of the game. All right, he, McCracken's one right field. What a play on words. Bottom of the fourth, we're scoreless. Andres Galarraga at the plate, actually. He's in the field. That's Bonds at the plate. I'm mixing up my All-Stars. Makes a great play oh. to Jamie Wright, to Rob Bonds. Top of the fifth, Estes facing the heart of the Rocky Order. Now it's Andres Galarraga at the plate. Swinging. Dante Bichette. Checking. Vinny Castilla. Fishing. Estes strikes out the side, retired 22 in a row after the McCracken hit you saw to lead off the highlights. And then at the at bat, base hit through the drawn in infield in the bottom of the fifth. Mark Lewis scores. 2-0 Giants. They go on to win 4-0. McCracken, the only hit of this ball game. And he tied a career high with 11 strikeouts, did Sean Estes. Going eight and test the bottom and of the, the third. Kilby Overis attempting to bunt. Takes one on the hands, but it's not a hit by pitch. The trainer checks it out, so he's back in. 
and hits one deep to right. Raul Mondesi drifts back, and he wishes it was a hit by pitch. Harris is third, ties the game at two, and it's Raul Mondesi at the plate. Takes one deep to left, but Steve Finley says, you want me on that wall. You need me on that wall. Robs it. Let's take another look. And you can still see as he climbs the wall, he robs Mondesi of his 18th home run. Top of the sixth, Dodgers lead 3-2. Greg Gagne with the bases loaded. Takes Danny Jackson down the right field line. Two runners score to make it 5-2 Dodgers. And Danny Jackson lost his seventh straight start. He is now 0-5 with the Padres. Pedro Rustachio goes six. And he got it. See, he knows the noise have to be a home run. Actually, he had gotten it before this double in the bottom of the sixth. And he had two hits. Manny Ramirez is going to go all the way on the score. David Howard's throws go all the way back to the backstop. Alomar ends up at third. A pinch runner would score for Alomar on the sacrifice fly to tie this game at four, which was the score in the top of the seventh when Shane Halter oh. gets robbed by Brian Giles. Look at it again. Giles halts the Halter fly ball. Another turn of the phrase. I'm like breaking my arm, patting myself on the back. Top of the eighth, still 4-4. Four, four. Chili Davis at bat. It's one of right center. Marquise Grissom tries to make like Brian Giles, but the ball goes off the glove. In and out, as a matter of fact. Next batter, Craig Paquette, and Paquette got it. A two-run homer to left field to make it 6-4 Royals. Paquette's eighth home run. Jim Tomei now on the bottom of the eighth. And Tomei busts out the whooping stick against Jose Rosado. His 23rd home run makes it 6-5 Royals. Still in the bottom of the eighth, we're tied at six. Jeff Montgomery is in the game for Rosado. Marquise Grissom at bat with the bases loaded in two outs. And Dave Howard can't handle the ball. Matt Williams scores. The Indians score three runs in the bottom of the eighth. What would you score that, Bob? E. Originally, it was scored an error, but the official score changed it to a ninth. Bo Sox down one, two out, 0-2 oh, count. Darren Bragg off Roberto Hernandez. Jeff Fry comes in to tie the game at five. Bottom of the ninth, we're still Todd Heathcliff Slocum in wild pitch. Oops. Ozzie Guillen advances to third without a throw. Big hustle play. Big play. Why? Because two batters later with Darren Lewis facing Slocum. Lewis is going to squeeze, but the throw gets away from catcher Walt McKeel. Guillen scores. Chai Sox win 6-5. Watch the replay as Lewis clearly misses the ball. McKeel can't control it, easily bringing Guillen home. And that will wrap it up. In all, Slocum hit a batter and threw through to the backstop in the ninth to fall to 0-4 on the... Than he had the last couple of years managing the Phillies, watching Terry Francona try to avoid his 11th straight loss, but not with base running like this. With Mickey Morandini on second after doubling, Ricky Otero singles. Morandini held up, though, thinking the ball might be caught. Tried to challenge Sammy Sosa's arm, and you see the result. Sosa leads the league with 14 assists. Cubs win at 9-3. The nine runs a monster cushion for Holland. Or Mulholland. And two RBI. Twins and Brewers from the house. Laverne and Shirley built, and they're acting like Lenny and Squiggy. Go! Oh. oh! Chuck Knobloch leads off the game with his fifth home run of the season. Off of Scott Carl, it's 1-0 Twins. The score would not remain that way. Three batters later, it's Ron Coomer coming. Coomer to center field. Gerald Williams on his imaginary horse makes a diving catch. <laughs> Top of the second, two on for Roberto Kelly. Hits one to right field. Jeremy Burnitz. Perhaps he needs to borrow Gerald Williams' horse. Oops. Pat Mears, Chuck Knobloch, come on home. It's 3-0 Twins. Greg Colburn, huge day at the plate. So did everyone in the Twins uniform. Top of the sixth, a solo shot off of Joel Adamson. Made it 9-4 Twins. Colburn's 4-6, four, four RBIs. How bad were the Brewers' pitching performance in this 13-1 loss?